Hi guys, Olive here, here today to tell you what books I'm hoping to read in March 2020. March is hopefully going to be a really big reading month for me. I am implementing some fairly major changes in my life right at the beginning of the month, and that should substantially increase my reading time, so I've budgeted accordingly. First and foremost, I would like to try to get to some of the books I didn't finish in February. Very early on in the month, new releases just steamrolled my entire life. I was just reading one after another. And there are even more new releases in March that I want to try to get to as well. I'm quickly learning as a reviewer. It is impossible to keep up. For whatever reason, March 3rd is this gigantic release date within the publishing industry this year. Couldn't tell you why. I don't know what's special about March 3rd, but there are about a million different books due to be released on March 3rd. And out of that million, I have three that I am particularly interested in reading and reviewing. One of them is one that I already spoke about in my anticipated nonfiction releases of 2020 video. That book is called Spirit Run by Noe Alvarez. As I said in that video, this is a memoir of the author's experience being the son of Mexican immigrant parents, and also how he decided to drop out of college where he was not assimilating very well to go on this epic run from Canada down to the Panama Canal to connect with the land of North America. A work of fiction that's due to be released on March 3rd is quite literally the book of my dreams. It is called We Ride Upon Sticks by Quan Berry. I seriously had a dream that Steve sent me this arc and when I woke up and realized I didn't actually have it, I was so upset that I hunted down the publicist to request this copy of it. I didn't include the story about the dream in the email. I just realized I probably should have. But what makes this book dream worthy is that it is set in Salem, Massachusetts in the 1980s and a girls field hockey team starts enlisting the help of the dark arts to get them to start winning games. It sounds like a Disney sports movie meets Heathers, and I had to have it. The last March 3rd release that I'm interested in reading and reviewing this month is called Writers and Lovers by Lily King. I was already excited to pick this book up when I first heard about it several months ago, and now I'm even more excited to read this book, since I've come to the realization that her previous book, Euphoria, is in fact one of the best novels I've read since I started on booktube. If you're interested in witnessing that breakthrough, I will link the video for you down below. But this book, her new one, is set in the 1990s, and in it we follow a struggling writer in her early 30s, essentially trying to move into the next phase of her life. I actually have a review of this book coming out in the Pittsburgh Post-Gazettes. I'm now doing freelance work for them if you didn't see any of my social media posts about that in early February. I cannot explain how happy it makes me that I am going to be reviewing this book, this book in particular, Lily King's new book, for my city's newspaper. Much excite. And then there's one more new release on my radar for March, a romance that thankfully comes out later in the month. It is called The Earl Not Taken by A.S. Fenichel. This is about a group of four girls who make a pact at finishing school that they will not allow themselves to be married off to just some stranger their parents want them to marry. But when one of the four girls finds herself in just such an arranged marriage, she enlists the help of a rake to uncover the identity of her future husband. I have some seriously heavy books on the docket that I need to read for the booktube prize, so I'm looking forward to this palette cleanser. And then I have two buddy reads set up for this month. I'm very much looking forward to both of them. The first of them is going to be with the lovely Kazen over at Always Doing. Together we're going to be reading Ghosts of the Tsunami by Richard Lloyd Perry, and this actually doubles as my five-star nonfiction prediction pick for the month. I specifically wanted to read this book during the month of March because the 2011 tsunami that it discusses occurred in March of that year. The author of this book was living and working in Japan at the time, but this book is less about the tsunami itself and more about the aftermath in a spiritual sense the grief that the nation as a whole was feeling afterward. If you watch Kazen's channel, which I totally recommend you do, by the way, you'll know that she lives and works in Japan, so I feel very lucky that I get to read this book with her. And then, following up from our buddy read in February, Emma over at A Cup of Books and I are planning to read Spook by Mary Roach, which is Mary Roach's take on the science of the afterlife. Mary Roach is an author that I've had a mixed experience with so far. I personally tend to prefer my science writing to be a little bit more focused and thorough than what she typically brings to the table. 
but she is a hoot to read. I will give her that. Another author I've unfortunately had a really similar experience with is Bill Bryson. I had a lot of problems with his newest release, The Body, but a lot of people in my real life and a lot of people online have told me that his travel writing tends to be much stronger than his science writing. And it is because of that fact that I'm going to give one of his travel books a try this month. This month I'm planning on picking up A Walk in the Woods, which is all about his experiences walking the Appalachian Trail, which stretches from Georgia the whole way up to Maine, we will see how I get along with this one. And then, as you probably have noticed, if your feed is as full of announcement videos as my feed currently is, there are so many different reading events and challenges going on across booktube during the month of March. And I would finally like to have a chance to join in on March Mystery Madness. I've really been craving some good mysteries in my life. I will leave links to all of the information for March Mystery Madness down in my description box below in case you would also like to join in. I know the host did put some challenges out there for everyone to join in on if they would like to, but I personally just want to get two books off of my existing TBR read. Wouldn't that be nice? The first of those two books is going to be Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz. This is a murder mystery within a murder mystery, and it doubles as a book about books. I have heard so much hype about this one, and there's a bird on the cover. I'm very excited. I also want to pick up the first book in Louise Penny's ongoing mystery series. That book is called Still Life. My husband actually found the fourth book in this series at a library book sale that we went to together. He picked this book up very shortly thereafter and absolutely devoured it. Ever since then, he's been pushing that book on me, but I told him I will eventually get to it. I just want to read the first book first. This first book in the series surrounds the murder of an elderly woman in a small village outside of Montreal. And from everything I've read about it, it seems like even though there's a murder investigation going on, it still has that cozy small town feel to it, which I'm really excited to read about. I do like Gilmore Girls after all. From what I've seen about this series, people seem to really enjoy it. So I'm excited to be getting in on the fun. I have two more books I would like to show you on this TBR. And the first of those two perfectly represents my strengthening obsession with a more gentle type of true crime book, one that is even sometimes natural history related. The book within that very strangely specific subgenre that I'm going to read this month is The Map Thief by Michael Blanding, which is all about an antiquarian map dealer who for years was pilfering maps from the Yale University Library. I'm sure it'll do what most of these books do, and it'll talk as much about maps as it does about the crime itself. I am interested in both of those things, so I am on board. And finally, since I'm apparently the last person left on Earth who hasn't read this book yet, I will be reading Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng and we'll just pretend that my motivating factor to finally get to it isn't the Hulu series adaptation that's coming out in March. From what I've heard about this book, it's a domestic drama set in small town Ohio that surrounds an adoption process. That's really all I know about it. I would finally like to know what all the fuss is about, and I would really like to watch that series when it comes out. So all of those books, plus some stragglers from February and some booktube prize books that I'll be finishing up will make up my March reading month. I would of course love to hear from you. If you've read any of these books, if you've heard of any of them, or if you want to read them, you can put that in the comment section below. But you can also find me on a variety of different places on social media, and the links to all of my profiles will be in the description box below. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!